Okay, so today we're going to look at linear graphs. So if you remember, the word linear means what? Straight, good. So when we have a straight line, so it can go either up or down or whatever, but it's a straight line. Now you guys have been used to seeing a lot of the linear equation written like this. And just to recap, who can tell me what does this M value stand for? Gradient. Good. So the gradient, what, does, what is the gradient? What does that tell us about the graph? Yeah, it tells us maybe about the steepness or the slope, yeah? So, and it's also sometimes considered like a rate. It's the rate of how much it's like going up or the rate of how it's going down. Because if it's a steep graph, it's going down quickly. So it'll be a high negative gradient. Okay, just, and then just quickly, what is this C value? Good, so that is the y-intercept. So just quickly, if I had a line like this, the C value, you would be reading off, like you'd read off there and you'd say the y-intercept or the C value there is say 3.5. All right, okay. So let's just look at the first thing. We're gonna just practice plotting graphs really easy today. So if they're given, you a they've given you a formula here to plot the line so really this is the equation of the straight line that's you're going to end up drawing so they first want you to um, fill in the table as a values so all you're simply doing here is obviously you have to find the y value but you're using the formula that you've got so every time you see x you'll put what the x that they're giving you, which is negative one. So if I've got negative one times two, that would be negative two minus another one would be three. So this one is minus three. If x is zero, what's it gonna be? If we have y equals two x minus one, if x was zero, it'll be minus one. And what, what about if x was one? Y would be two times one minus one, so good. Y equals one. So when you're gonna sketch a graph um, or plot the graph, you really always only need two points. So can I suggest that you just always probably just do your first and your last one on your table of values because it's quite easy. So when I go negative one and negative three, so I'm gonna plot that line there and I'm gonna do plot one and one. So it doesn't matter, as long as you've got two points, you will get the line that you need. So I'm going to get my ruler, and now you're going to need rulers, and you just draw your line up, and that's plotting the graph. All right, so if we move to the next bit, we're going to plot um, the graph on the calculator, because we're always going to get our calculator. Now this is one method, I'm gonna pause it here and show you how probably a quicker method on that. Okay, so today we're gonna to look at determining the slope of a straight line. So if you remember back, we're talking about a straight line. So our general formula looks like this, um, which we're gonna look, oh sorry, we're gonna look at something different um, later on. But so when we're talking about the slope, we're talking about the m value, the gradient. So you might want to pop up above that, that that's the gradient. So another word for the gradient is the slope. Okay, so if you, we've done this before in junior year levels. So we know that the gradient, so we often use the letter m or slope. Um, we can say rise over run. So a way to find it is that you're always going from one point to another. So if you look at it, um, I'm starting at this point here. And if I was talking about the rise, it means for me to get to the other point, I've gone down, downwards. So that means I've got a negative rise, okay? And then I go across the axes, and that's the run. So if you look there, 
I've gone across a run, but I've headed into the positive direction. So that's a positive number. So if I've got a negative over a positive, what type of number will I end up with? Negative. negative. Good. So that means you'll see when it slopes down, it's a negative slope or negative gradient. So if we slope up, so here again, so say I was trying to work out the gradient using rise over run, I'd have my... I'd, I pick two points that go through the line. And if you look here, so I've got to go from one point to the other. But first you do the rise. If you see, I go up a positive rise, don't I? So it's a positive rise over and also when I run across, I'm going in the positive direction of X. So my run is positive. So therefore, that will be a positive gradient. All right. If you have over here, like, this is on your second page, sorry, I've put it on one page. Um, if you have over here, see how, if I said that was three, so what it's actually doing is going through y equals three. So if you have a zero slope, you'll have an equation or a rule that looks like y equals something. So wherever it's cutting through, so for example, if I had a line cutting down here, maybe at negative four, that would be y equals negative four. And that's a zero gradient or zero slope. So when it's flat, like you could walk on it flat, that's a zero. When you have it like the other way over here, when it's going, uh, sorry, when it's going through the x value, so say that was going through, that's three on the x axis, so that will be x equals three. When you have that, it's undefined. So undefined means if you think you can't actually walk vertically, if it was exactly vertically, you couldn't walk up it. So that's undefined, so sometimes you remember it that way. So if you have an x equals something, you'll have undefined on there. All right, so that's what we're talking about gradients. Sorry, and if I just go back up here, we can often use this formula with the y2 minus y1. And what that means is that, say, this point up here, it would have had its own x value and y value. And this point down here would have had its own x value and its own y value. So I'm going to label it point 1 and point 2. So I'm calling the point 1, so if this is point 1, I'm giving it x1, labelling it x1 and y1. And if this is my point 2, I label it x2 and y2. Doesn't matter which one you label point 1 or point 2, you'll get the same. Um, it, you should get the same value as if someone, if they um, labelled them the other way around. So let's have a go at doing them. That's on the next page. So let's go back. Oh, so here we have... It says find the slope, so you know that means gradient um, of the line passing through points 1 and 4 and 4 and 8. So what they're giving you here is two points. So maybe point 1 here, so I'm going to call it x1 and y1. And they're giving me point 2, my second point, so x2 and y2. All right? We're going to write the formula for gradient. So that was on the other page. So maybe m equals, so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So you just substitute the numbers in. So my y2 is 8 and my y1 is 4. My x2 was 4 and my x1 was 1. So then you do 8 minus 4, which is 4, and 4 minus 1 is 3. So this gradient is 4 over 3. This is a positive number, yeah? So it's a positive gradient. It would be going, if you were thinking about this line, this line would be going up in some way, like upwards from left to right. All right, so... Um, oh, don't worry about that. Here... Okay, so next thing is find the slope passing through points 0 and 10 and 4 and 2. So we can do the same again. I'm just going to call that x1, y1, x2, y2. Now I know the slope, we can find it using y2 minus y1 
over x2 minus x1. So I'll just substitute in. My y2 was 2. My um, y1 was 10. And then x2 was 4. And x1 was 0. So 2 minus 10 would be negative 8. And 4 minus 0 is 4. So you can simplify that. Because what's negative 8 divided by 4? Negative 2. Good. So if I was thinking about this line it's going downwards it's a negative gradient okay now it says uh find the slope of the line passing through the points one and seven and four and two using the formula for the slope line we've already done that it's the same as what we're doing before and give your answer to two decimal places so we might have to use a calculator because the numbers aren't going to be nice um easy rounded numbers. So let's have a look. Um, I'm going to call this x1, y1, x2, y2. I'm going to write out the formula. So slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Always good to write the formula and what you're doing because if you make a little simple error, I can tell you that you know what you're talking about and I can point out that you've just accidentally done that. And that's so much easier to fix. And so if you show me what you know, it's easier for me to find where you're actually going wrong. So y2 is 2 minus 7 over um, 4 minus 1. So if you've got 2 minus 7, you end up with negative 5. And if you've got 4 minus 1, it's uh, 3. So they wanted two decimal places, so you're just going to have to do that on your calculator. So we end up getting negative 1.67, sorry. And in a little moment, you'll go back and do 6b. But as I said, I want to go on and do the next bit because this is fairly straightforward. So let's do this bit. All right, so here we're talking about the equation of a straight line. So what I want to know is, oh, let point out, is you've often been using this format where in previous, in junior years, where this was, I'm going to say, the slope, or we might call it the gradient. And this one here, here was the y-intercept. What's going to happen now with general mathematics from now on, from now up to into year 12, they're going to follow, you're going to see, they're going to use, oops, sorry, this pattern, this formula here. Now, it's still a straight line and it's still the same thing. All that's happening here, so we've got y equals a plus bx. They're just using different letters and they use, if you have a look, they put this one, oh, sorry, this one here is the y-intercept. So they actually talk about the y-intercept first and it's represented by an a. So no longer will you see a C, we'll start talking about an A. It's still the same thing, still the y-intercept, but they're going to use A. Now the other one, the B value, what do you think that is then? The gradient. Good, the slope or the gradient. Excellent. So that one's the slope and the gradient. So we're still, it's all exactly the same. So if you were finding the gradient of a straight line, you would still say, B equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And you would still or say rise over run. Okay, same thing but using a different letter. All right, just in general maths, we're just going to use this. And it also will be in our calculator as well to select A and B. So it won't be too hard and won't be confusing. So we're moving into this new one with uh, y equals a plus bx. So the y-intercept is the a value and the b, um, the slope is the b. All right, so we'll just remember that. So if you're looking here in this first example down here, they're asking us to write down the y-intercept and the slope of each of the following. Pretty easy. So here, I'm going to say y-intercept Let's just practice and know that that's the A value. What's the y-intercept on that first one? Yeah, awesome, negative six, because the one with the X is the gradient. So what's the slope for this first one? Nine, good, and that will be the B value. All right, next one, very easy, therefore, 
What is the y-intercept on this one? Ten. Yep. And the slope? Five. 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 Negative five. five. Okay. What about this one? What's the y-intercept on this one? One. No. Zero. Zero. There's no y. It's good. It's actually going through zero, zero. So if you were thinking of this graph here, this one, I'm talking about this one, it's a negative gradient, but it's going through zero, zero like that. Sorry. Goes through zero, zero. So the y-intercept is at zero. All right. So what is the gradient of that one? What's the B value? Negative two, good. And the last one, they've they've switched it around there again. So what's the what's the y intercept? Five. Good. And what's the slope for this one? It's a bit of a trick. See this one, it's not written in y equals. So if I bring that negative four x over, it'd be positive four x plus five. So what's the slope on this? Four. Good. Yeah, I know, they're a bit nasty. They won't do that in year 12. I don't, you won't see. You don't have to rearrange formulas like that, so don't stress too much. You might in this chapter, but not as a year 12. They'll give it to you as y equals a plus bx. All right, so in this next question, when they're asking you to write down the equations of the straight line, so remember, it's a plus bx. So for me, this one, a is 9 and b is 6, so it would be 9 plus 6x. This next one would be y equals 2 minus 5x, and the last one, y equals negative 3 plus 2x. So you just have to write them out, pretty easy. Yeah? Not too hard there. Okay, I'm just going to go through a few. So here it says sketch the graph of these two equations. So you can, if you like, pop them into your calculators and just copy it if you like. But what they're doing here is they're going to do the y-intercept first, so which is 8. So they're marking here... You can see they're putting the 8. They then know that the B value, so the B equals 2. So remember, the B is the gradient, so I could say rise over run. I could write 2 as a fraction like that, 2 over 1, couldn't I? Yes, it means the same thing. So if you want, you can go from your one point, your y-intercept, and I'm going to go up a rise of 2. If I go up a rise of 2 from 8, what would I end up at? 10, good. And if I went over a run of 1, so I'm just going to go... Oops, I'll just go across 1. Yeah, you can do... You could have done, that would be another point on your graph, 1 and 10. And it would have lined up and you just get your ruler and you line them through there. I don't know why they chose, they chose 5 um, to substitute, they chose 5 and substituted into this formula. What would be easier is to choose even 1, yeah? Y equals 8 plus 2, Y equals 10. That makes sense, that's what we found. So when X equals 1, don't choose hard numbers, choose easy numbers. Pick your easiest ones. All right, so you're going to have to draw the equations. Just sketching. So sketching just means you get a ruler, you draw across like that, you quickly label um, your x, y. Yeah, I would label my y-intercept because I can read that, 8. And then I had my other point, which I said was 1 and 10. I do that, I get my ruler, and I draw the line. That's all sketching is. No, no measuring out the axes and, you know, nicer. You just have the ruler makes it neat and that's it, okay? I should have got the ruler out, but I was pretty good. All right, so that's all you have to do for sketching. No, don't waste too much time.